Good evening and welcome to the Theater Ovation Podcast Edition. Tonight we are going to be talking with Mike Baker, who is a local actor and blog writer in the area. Hi Mike, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Well, we are going to be learning a little bit about Mike and his acting and writing background and just basically chatting for a bit about all sorts of fun and exciting things. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that right now. So, Mike, how did you get started in your art within acting and then also with writing blogs? Because I hear you like to write a lot as well. Yes, I do. Uh, the acting began with my brother-in-law, Rick Marshall, when he was appearing in a play at Kingsport Theatre Guild called A Thousand Clowns. He called me to say that they were needing someone to portray the role of Albert in the play and ask if I would be interested. And having seen performances by the Kingsport Theatre Guild the summer before at FunFest, I wanted to be part of it. So uh, when I went down there, I auditioned and won the role. That is awesome. I actually... Fun fact, Mike is actually my brother-in-law, so I remember as a child going to see him in A Thousand Clowns, and then um, did you do Little Abner? No, I didn't. I watched Little Abner, and that was what inspired me to want to be part of the production. Okay, that's right, that's right. Well, very cool. So how long have you been doing acting? Was that your first real taste of acting on the stage, or did you do anything as a child growing up? In elementary school, I had a couple of... uh, instances in which I was on stage, but basically I would count that as the beginning of of my uh, acting. Okay, very cool. So what is your favorite part when it comes to acting and being on stage? Because I also know that you do a lot of different skits and things like that too. What is your favorite part when it comes to being on stage and performing for an audience? I think the fact that there is an audience there is uh, very important. I think the feedback that the audience provides is vital to a performance. Uh, The spontaneity of a live performance has always intrigued me. In watching television growing up, I was always fascinated by the live presentations, which mainly were daytime dramas at that time, because by Mm -hmm. the time that uh, I came along, a lot of the... uh, Uh, productions had transferred over to videotape or film, but the few live performances that still existed during uh, my childhood, I found very interesting. So did you, um, like you said, you knew a lot, or you watched a lot of different shows growing up, and I know one of those was I Love Lucy, um, which is a very, very popular TV show. Everyone loves Lucy. I love Lucy. Um, was was that an inspiration when you started doing acting and doing skits? Did you draw a lot of your comedy from those shows? I love Lucy as well. And uh, yes, she was an inspiration to me in, in, in the comedy aspect. And she was a very disciplined performer. Uh, A lot of people think that she ad-libbed a lot. She did not. There were some very funny, unplanned moments on her program. But what I particularly thought was fascinating about that was her ability to be so versatile and keep the uh, performance going even when something occurred that was not planned. Yeah, she was very, very good at improv. I remember reading that about her. Actually, I think you've mentioned that to me as well. Um, so when it comes to the different shows and things, you said that you, you had done, um, a thousand clowns. Um, what, what has been your favorite? And and it doesn't even have to be if you've been in it, just a show in general that you really like. What is something that you just, that resonates with you, that you remember and that you really enjoy? Are you talking in terms of, uh, live stage performances or, uh, television? Yeah, or- anything, anything like any type of acting, uh, performance. Interestingly, uh, one of the programs in which I was interested growing up was a daytime drama called The Edge of Night, which was an outgrowth of the old radio version of Perry Mason, which in and of itself became a popular primetime series. Uh, The Edge of Night uh, was brought to daytime. Originally, it was going to be Perry Mason, and then they decided that for uh, some unforeseen problems that they needed to just make it an entirely different show, but they brought over some of the radio cast who had performed with Perry Mason. But in any case, uh, the many live performances I remember seeing of The Edge of Night were fascinating because here I was sitting in Kingsport, Tennessee, realizing that 
in New York City on stage, these actors were uh, going through the performance right then and there. Uh -huh. uh, and it was very exciting courtroom type cases and uh, uh, crime scenes and things that took an awful lot of discipline and hard work when you consider the fact that they were putting on a pr new production every day. Oh, yeah. And I just thought that that was wonderful that they were able to bring such a high quality level of performance to live television. Oh, definitely. See, I, I didn't know that. So I learned something new too. That's really cool. Um, so I, I mentioned that you do skits and things. Tell me a little bit more about the different skits that you've done. Cause I know that you've also written some as well. So let us know about that. Uh, the skits have been for uh, church mainly, and in the skits that I have written, one of the ones that comes to mind is one in which uh, you were actually a performer as well. Uh -huh. uh, it was a Christmas skit yep. in which uh, I come in with a tree that looks absolutely hideous, <laughs> and you and my wife was in the skit as well. You two were making fun of it. And then in uh, just frustration, I start tearing away the branches. And interestingly, that part of the skit, I did draw from the Lucy show. Uh -huh. in, which, cool. in which uh, Lucy and Vivian were fighting about trees and they started tearing oh, yeah. each other's Christmas trees up. And then really in chagrin realized what they'd done. But in any case, I start tearing apart the tree and then what is left for the audience to visualize is a cross. Mm -hmm. That's all that's left. And of course, that is the message of that skit yep. that uh, the cross was, in fact, the perfect tree. Uh, yep. I remember that. I remember that. That was that was one of my favorite um, skits that you had written because it was there was a lot of meaning behind it as well. You know, talking about that, the Christmas season and what the real meaning behind it is. Um, I also know that you and I, uh, and I'm sure you remember this, it wasn't, it was uh, one Christmas when we did a, uh, a little skit for your bank. I remember that I was, uh, who was I? I was Marley? No, not Marley. I was Scrooge and you were Bob Cratchit. Bob Cratchit. Yes. 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 I remember that. We had, man, we had people in tears. It was just a wonderful performance. But um, yeah, when was that? That was a long time ago. That was many years ago when Downtown Kingsport Association uh, was uh, presenting different activities at Christmas time. And we were in what would be termed a storefront window. It was actually in the bank, but uh, we were in the front window and actually doing ad lib performance of that. We were just basically going off of what we had seen portrayed in uh, the Christmas Carol movies and uh, playing off of that and just having fun with it. Oh, I remember that. It was a blast because you, <laughs> there's actually a picture that I remember and it's of, of, it's of Mike and he's like pointing at me and I'm, I'm looking terrified in my little scarf, my little hat. And yeah, I remember that. That was such a fun thing to do. And everyone really appreciated it. A lot, everyone loved it. We received a lot of positive feedback yeah. about that. That would have been fun to have repeated, but we, unfortunately, no. we never had the opportunity yeah. to do that again. We never did get to do that again. Um, but yeah, man, that was a lot of fun. Um, so moving a little bit away from, from skits and uh, theater. So you, just like me, you are a writer as well. And um, you've been doing a lot of um, blogging and trying to get that out there. So tell me a little bit about your blogs and, and just pitch yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you've actually inspired me as far as the blogs are concerned. I've not done that many so far, but uh, interestingly, again, we have the soap opera element coming into mm -hmm. play because uh, my uh, blog is entitled Not This World Alone, and that comes from the opening epigraph of the old daytime drama Another World, in which the announcer would intone every day, we do not live in this world alone, but in a thousand other worlds. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I actually think there's a great message to that because all of us have our own private thoughts and dreams and hopes and aspirations that we don't necessarily share with anyone else or verbalize, but yet they're within us and we have this yearning to attain or achieve something. And uh, that was really the inspiration for the title for the blog. 
and it's it's actually it's a really good blog. Um, Mike had me help him set it up and told me a little bit about the um, the idea for it and everything. And and from what he's posted, it's been it's been well received, and it's a very good blog. He's a very talented writer. Well, thank you very much. You're that welcome. Of course, of course. So, um, what are your future plans concerning? Are you wanting to try to write some more skits or maybe? try to audition for any more shows. I know you're definitely going to try to keep the blog going up, but what are some things that you have that you would like to continue doing within performing in the arts? Well, definitely the vlog. I would like to do more with that. Uh, unfortunately, there's some time constraints there, but we all have time constraints. So sometimes I think it's just a matter of, okay, deciding I'm going to make time to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Uh, I would love to, again, uh, perform, but I don't know, you know, if that opportunity is going to present itself in the near future, but I'm certainly open to that idea. As for writing skits, uh, it has been several years now. Uh, the church has gone to a different uh, methodology, and so they are no longer using the live skits there that they once did. Uh, so that opportunity within that venue is not there, but if it were to come up to uh, for some other organization, I would certainly be open to that as well. You heard it here, folks. If you would like to hire Mike Baker to write skits, he is ready and willing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kind of wrap it up just a little bit. Um, so I want to end this um, with, you know, if you could give any advice to someone who's wanting to pursue the art that you do, if someone's wanting to pursue acting or skit writing or blog writing or or performing in general, um, what is some advice that you, you would like to give them? Well, interestingly, here I go drawing from Lucy once again. Uh, Lucy used to uh, receive such questions, and uh, her response was, start in your own hometown. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to New York or Hollywood or any of those other big cities. Start in your own hometown with uh, performing and uh just make an effort to be involved in whatever aspect that is open to you at the time. For example, perhaps you might not win a part necessarily at an audition, but you can still participate behind the scenes uh, at, at a production. And uh, there is much to be learned. Lucy herself learned a lot by observing in, in the film industry. And uh, that was what made her one of the great performers because she knew her business inside and out. Lucy made it look so easy, but there was a lot of hard work and discipline involved there. So uh, I think it would be fair to say she definitely has been an inspiration to me mm -hmm. in that regard. That is very, very sound advice, definitely. I know that um, a lot of people think that you have to be on Broadway to make it, that you have to be you know, in a film or, or something to be a success in acting, and, and that's just not true. There's so many, as I was talking to someone earlier about this, there's actually so many different venues within this region, not only just theaters, but, you know, churches and different things like that where you can get out there and you can get your art seen and, and network, network, network. Just get to know people and just have fun. Just, you know, don't be scared. Get out there and, and do what you love to do. And I would say, too, education is very important. Uh, the skills uh, that you can pick up just in the course of your ordinary education through high school and, and college classes can go a long, long way, especially with the writing aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. There's much value to those classes that may not seem to be all that appealing at the time, but uh, in retrospect, I think one would find that uh, there's... Uh, tremendous uh, value that uh, results from just being persistent and persevering, staying with it and uh, learning everything that you possibly can. Absolutely. That is so true. Education is definitely key. Well, Mike, is there anything that you would like to add or anything else you'd like our listeners to, to know or to hear or it's all yours? Well, thank you. I would just say, uh, it's very important not to let the demon of discouragement take you down because everyone uh, that attempts writing or acting or whatever can uh, sometimes feel like that they are not making any progress, that what is the use in continuing to try. And those are the moments you just got to hang tough, stay with it, uh, keep on keeping on and 
if you will do that, I think you will find that you will be rewarded. Most definitely. Well, Mike, it's been an honor speaking with you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight and telling us a little bit more about your art and helping our listeners understand more about what performing is and the different aspects within skits and blogs and, and various things like that. It's um, It's been an honor speaking with you tonight. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Hey guys, that's it for this segment. I will be back here in the next few weeks speaking to a couple of more people um, with different, um, they have different arts that they do as well. And um, I'm very excited to learn some more about um, their stories and what they do. So that is it for tonight's segment on the Theater Ovation. You guys have a good night and we'll see you soon.